hey guys it's phase one today i like to try something new um i want to watch inside star citizen which came out just a few hours ago haven't seen it yet and what you're gonna see in this video is my initial reaction as well as my thoughts on some of the things that they're bringing out so without any further ado let's get into it all right if you're new make sure to subscribe for content if you like contents like this and um make sure to leave uh, comments below of what you think of this new format I wanted to try uh this out so make sure to let me know all right so without any further ado, let's get let's get started What I think makes its fan favorite ship is it's that ship that people in their head kind of see in a fantasy sci-fi world. It's that blockade runner, that cargo runner, that smuggling ship that the company who makes it may not think smuggling, but that's the purpose people start using it for. The Mercury is a fan favorite because... I think a lot of people initially attach to what it looks like. It has some cool features in it, right? So it, it, I think the deck is kind of stacked in its favor. You can haul cargo, you have multi-crew gameplay, you've got scanning, you've got data running. It's kind of a one-size-fits-all that you'd want if you were only going to buy one ship. So the exterior on this ship, the default version, will be white, black, and red. That white area on top is basically where all of the tinting gets applied for the ship. Asymmetry is just something different then, so it's a little bit surprising, right? When some all right, so they're talking about the the white part is going to be the part where they're going to be changing the skins it seems like and from that's that's what i'm getting and um i'm actually interested to seeing more skins right now in the iae they brought out the black and gold and i think was there a blue one i'm not sure no i think a black and gold and this one and um I kind of like the black and gold is is not too it's all right to me um but I kind of want to see more options in terms of skins for this ship. I do own it and yeah, I'm, I'm actually interested to see um somebody looks more skins something. and not skins that you have to buy with real money. I want to have skin options in game. So hopefully in 312 they have skin options in game for this ship and other ships as well so let's continue and they don't see the same thing on the other side uh then there's always like a little bit of wonder maybe so it's kind of cool because it's kind of like when you get a white suv but it's like dual tone and you have the bottom half of the suv it's kind of like the black plastic it's that's sort of the way we're treating all of these crusader ships when you first walk into a mercury basically the feeling should be of sort of open possibilities right so the cockpit has these cool retracting seats that travel all the way to the front and they kind of give you this nice little ride and then we also have all these physicalized buttons where we actually mapped out all of the i like that <laughs> i i think this is really cool um the fact that the buttons will be able to to move in and, and switch as you interact with them and uh, it adds to the immersion I like the fact that they they really took their time and built this system out and uh, I like the fact that they decided not to rush it and we're seeing the end results of this I mean look at this look how like as I fly my MSR I feel like I'm in an actual ship especially when I have on um the face over ip and then i'm able to it's tracking my face and i'm able to look around look into my look 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 at the, the the ship ui and things like that it's it's very very uh immersive uh that's the word that i'm looking for there all right so let's continue buttons that we're going to need for the ship and then add the functionality to those buttons as we implement the gameplay associated that's cool the visibility is really good it's got this open canopy that you can see pretty good in all directions and you also get a little bit of downward direction so when you're landing you can see the ground that's cool that's that's cool i like the fact that you can see the ground while it's you're certain. landing when beta running comes online this is going to be one of the busiest hubs of this ship you're going to see a split between the server section and also where you get into the turrets so the server room you know what um 
this is one of the most exciting things that has that comes that this ship comes with now when they get in the gameplay where you're going to be able to switch in the different um i don't know what they'll call it server racks or memory into those servers let's go back to it that way you guys can see what i'm talking about here right when you're able to switch in in and out so i think what would happen is as you're downloading data or uploading you can switch in and out as um the memory fills up like uh like the way we be switching uh and an ssd or switching a usb uh a drive so i'm thinking you'll be able to switch them out in and out just like that and just have a place to place them and, and things of that nature so um, it's going to be really, really exciting to be able to do that. And uh, I, I look forward to that gameplay loop once once they have it live. So I'm when really excited for it. Online, this is going to be one of the busiest hubs of this ship. You're going to see a split between the server section and also where you get into the turrets. So the server room is kind of a place where you walk into and then kind of decide what direction you're going to go in and what exactly you're going to do. It's going to have a lot of little busy bee activity going around, changing out the server racks, trying to get the data that you're specifically looking for. To me, what you really see in the server room is many opportunities and options for what to do next. The rec room is one of my favorites. This is just due to A, we can play chess. I worked on that for quite a bit, but we, we got it there. That is, this is really, really cool. The fact that um while you're on board you can play little mini games and they always said that they would do it and i think this is like the first mini game that they have in the game the fact that you can play chess with your with your crewmates and and things of that nature is really 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 good i actually played somebody and he, he beat me in like <laughs> in like one one minute but it's 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 fun to it's it's interesting to have something else to do us especially when you're you're jumping from one side of the space, the star system, to another side, and uh, you're not sure what to do. So it's it's pretty cool. And like, in addition to that, especially in the 600i, there is a pool table, and I think the Carrick as well has a pool table. So I'm sure they're going to be implementing similar mini games like that. So I'm thinking it's going to be interesting to see uh, to be able to also play pool with other players as well. So it's it's uh. It's a neat and feature that they're adding. It's that room where players can get up, kind of group up before a mission, talk about what they're going to do, uh, how they're going to approach it, and then execute. You know, when I look at the kitchen, like, I wonder if they're going to give us the ability to, I know there is eating in the game, right, even right now. Um, but I wonder if they're going to give us the ability to actually make a dish and heat it up and, and things of that nature. Like it would be cool if let's say you eat something and um, it's cold. It has a different effect on you than when you actually warm it up and it's and you eat it like it will taste better to you and maybe you'll feel better. I don't know how they'll implement it, but it will be cool where when you're in the kitchen, you're doing something right that way it's i feel like it'll be a lot more immersive uh if they do it i'm not sure if they'll do it um but knowing cig they like to throw out surprises here and there so you never know they might be working on something like that we have room uh again you know we kind of want to convey a little sense of like relaxation or a little bit more calmer you kind of want to be able to relax and you know and lay down and just kind of chill out Habitation, you'll see sort of a long hallway, and then built into that hallway, you'll have several different stations. Your toilet, your sort of desk where you can do your midnight reading, as well as uh, some access to the sublevel. The maintenance sublevel is kind of cool because it's this just like these ventilation shafts that you can walk around in, and you can kind of see the inner workings of the ship, and you can kind of the sub level is i think it's fantastic that they did it um i think i don't know if they will implement things like this in older ships but i'm thinking in the future they'll plant they'll plan things like this out in future ships that they're building because every ship should have something similar to this especially the bigger ships like your carricks or your connies right so um i can see them maybe going back into the carrick and adding things like this 
um, but I'm not sure if they will actually implement invest the time to do it right now it might not be on their priority list but it's interesting that they have this here one of the concerns that players have right now with the msr is the fact that there's only one exit right so i'm thinking why not add an exit through the sub level it's it's an option you know what i mean because right now if you get breached there's literally one uh exit and you're you're kind of stuck that way right there's no escaping you know what i mean sneak around a little bit but we'll you'll let you discover that on your own engineering is very compact you have a bunch of component housing surrounding you the moment you walk in this is where you'll most likely have to run to to make repairs when things start to hit the fan scanning room is going to be really really a really neat room Players, when they go in there right now, it functions as a support seat. So you need somebody else to run the extra radar contacts or whatever, you can see it from that seat. But in the future, the gameplay of that room, it's really going to come alive. Cargo Bay is... Hmm. Just based on what he's, he's, ta he's how he's describing how the gameplay is going to be like, I feel like they're going to have some really interesting things. I'm really excited to see how they're going to implement this scanning uh uh gameplay loop in here i'm really really interested to see how it's gonna look like how it's gonna feel like and um actually is one of the things i'm excited about exciting in this uh in the star runner in that we were able to increase it so the star runner is running a little bit more cargo it also went through probably some of the largest amount of redesigns of any ship that i've worked on so far and that was to be able to fit the ursa and the cyclone inside of it and make all of that kind of geometry work to be honest, I'm actually glad that they did that. It's it's very, very important. Um, I think it's part of the reason why they removed the uh, main thruster at the back so that they could fit the Ursa rover. So I think it was a good decision. Um, some people kind of didn't like that, but you know what? I think it's worth being able to store uh, an Ursa and then... And, and, uh, land rovers such as that so it's it's really really good plus we get extra cargo space so it's it makes the ship a lot more profitable when you're when when um in, in them deciding to do that making this ship was pretty rewarding in the end the thing I'm hoping players find a lot of joy with is that element of players kind of getting into that ship and, and having fun doing what they really want to do as a designer is really what will make me um, really happy to kind of see it used for those purposes. See, right now, the only concern that I have and other people that I've uh, seen online have is the, the fact that the msr drinks a lot of hydrogen fuel um i feel like they need to increase it cre increase the the hydrogen um the size of the hydrogen tank for for this ship or they should reduce the amount of hydrogen it actually consumes because it limits how much you can use a ship one trip to planet side let's say on either hurston or or microtech and to come back into space your hydrogen fuel is pretty much done and it's it, it just makes the ship useless after that point especially when you're starting off and you're starting to try to make money one trip down there and back is like around six thousand worth of six thousand auec worth of uh hydrogen fuel so i think they need to rework that i know that they want it to be um they want it they want to put some type of limitations on it but i think this one is too excessive i feel like they need to increase a little bit this just my thoughts on that the mercury star runner is the first ship to arrive for manufacturer crusader industries and the success in bringing it to life was the effort of artists designers technicians and more from almost every studio here at cig now on this our special thanksgiving edition of inside star citizen I'd like to do something a little different and give thanks not only to the folks that you always see on videos, either today or in the past, but to those folks who work behind the scenes that you rarely, if ever, get to see. Folks who worked on the Mercury like Jin, Josh, Dan, Calix, 
Arthur, Graham, Daryl, Alberto, Lars, Daniel, Jonas, Matt, James, Patrick, Brian, Colin, Francesco, a second set of Jameses and Joshes, and some folks I'm probably leaving out. So, so let's go ahead, uh, give our thanks to them, and then let's jump into a sprint report before I remember who I left out and I start to feel bad. Let's get to it. Up first, let's take a look at the current progress for the Lagrange Point gas clouds intended to come online in the upcoming Alpha 3.12. Very These excited for that. Clouds are designed that is so to add cool. Color and texture to the various that is that is literally like that. That looks like like a new version of Alisar. It's a little different. It doesn't have the landing pads, but I like it. I like the the new space stations that they have Pretty coming out. Very interesting. Throughout the standard and the cloud system. tech makes now it look so. Look at that beautiful. Ready for implementation. The lighting team is on deck, currently working to dial wow. in the specific wow. palette so that clouds closer to the sun appear warmer and those that are on the outer reaches present cooler. What you're seeing wow. here is their first pass through many of the Lagrange point stops in the system. And once they've hit all of them, artists will double back and fine tune each one ahead of their intended release next month. Lighting artists are also currently working to place the various key lights, secondary lights, and shadow casters for the upcoming refinery decks. These tools are often used to add additional texture and detail to any location, or to make them pop, as Ian might say. The challenge here is always the same, to create a dynamic and visceral look that makes a place feel vibrant and alive while not going overboard so we remain performative for players in the game client. After this work, they'll begin fine-tuning things like smoke and atmosphere from the giant smelters, as well as placing the various fixtures in to match the lighting they've set once that's been locked down. Work also continues on fleshing out the docking area add-ons for existing space stations throughout Stanton. With this look at some of the work being done on the interior areas players may find themselves in when they arrive. Now this sprint was all about adding in details like branding, uh, the docking services area, what's behind the docking services area counter where you're not supposed to go, secondary details along the floor Very like parallax occlusion mapping, and an observation deck where players can wait for their friends to arrive or just watch the big giant spaceships come in switching gears for a bit that is going to be so cool to to see the bigger ships come in and out and dock in and i think it, it's going to be very very immersive it's very very i'm glad that they're working on it and um, i'm actually excited to see it i i i wonder how soon we'll, we'll start seeing docking docking uh collars and things like that it's been a while since we've checked in on the pyromaniacs in vfx and they've just completed a sprint focused on the addition of convection propagation where the calculations that determine how a fire spreads throughout a room or across a surface will now include the influence of gravity, wind speed, and wind direction. The cone you see here represents which affected volumes within its path will be affected by convection, where it heats up both voxels and entities alike. And then the wind speed, direction, and gravity are retrieved on a per room basis. This is important as it allows the system to pre-calculate some of the values involved, a necessary aspect in making a system that can perform not just for a single player, but for everyone in a multiplayer environment. And in honor of IAE going on this week, here's a look at some of the interior progress going on for the Crusader Industries Hercules Starlifter. These images are from the engineering section on the top level. Now that Graybox phase is complete, this ship is massive. Meaning they've validated the location for all components and subcomponents, ensuring everything fits as it should, the traversal needs for player characters to get everywhere they need to get, and that no surprises have crept up along the way, this section will begin to transition to final art, where vehicle artists will begin the detail work necessary to bring this area of the ship up to the high standards we expect of Crusader Industries vehicles. Finally, to wrap things up this week, we can announce that's that a Nova big ship. Tank, it's a very big ship. I'm actually excited to interest, excited to see it actually. Systems, has begun its adventure from concept to reality, 
with this look at its first steps into white box phase. The Nova is a massive beast that looks to change the face of ground combat in the persistent universe when it arrives. Wow. And we're very proud to announce that it's just taken its first step on its journey through the vehicle pipeline. So what did we learn this week? Well, Man, it's going to be interesting to see that tank in game. I think my guess is when they want the time when they want to implement this, uh, the tanks is probably going to be around a time when they actually have NPCs on ground and um, just to have that challenge especially when you get a mission you have to go down there you have to bring this tank with you so you'll probably need a, a bigger ship to, to hold it and to land it and probably like uh, similar to the Idris mission that's currently right now in the PU you'll have something similar like that on ground where you'll need uh, multiple players to, to to also help you to to achieve to to kind of break into a base or or anything like that so i think it's very very uh it's i think they're gonna bring some really interesting gameplay loops with that tank once they actually drop it but yeah so that is pretty much um inside star citizen for this week um let me know what you thought about some of the things that we saw like i do you, is there are you guys excited about the the msr coming out do you have it um and let me know um any of the things that you saw in regards to the sprint report um let me know in the comments below which what 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 interests you most um let me know what you think about this new format i'm thinking uh to do uh moving forward um based on how you guys uh respond to it then i think i'll look into it more just wanted to try it out so let please do let me know if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and um if you like this video make sure to leave a like as well all right i will see you on the next one